Okay, I think it's about some um, about time. Welcome everybody. Good to see you all. So we've got a few uh, important dates um, coming up. 17th of June um, is, is, is when the restaurants open, so you can go and get a, um, a steak or whatever. Should be nice. 17th of May, yeah. 21st of June is, is when they're telling us that most of these restrictions are going to be lifted and we'll be able to sing again. Ah, um, I've got it. Actually, uh, community tea is scheduled that week. I don't know if we want to do something. Uh, 25th of June, that would be. Or, or I'm thinking of, um, in kind of celebration, really, is just having a, a praise and worship night. Maybe the following Saturday or the Saturday after. That would be either the 26th of June or the 3rd of July. Uh, just to come together and worship God and to say, yes, we can sing again. And that would be great. Um, so uh, I haven't got any plans yet, but I think it would be good to do something like that. Let's pray. Oh Lord, God of our salvation. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are worthy of glory and honour, power and dominion. You reign, you are the first and the last, you're the beginning and the ending. Long ago, you brought your people out of Egypt with a strong hand and outstretched arm. You redeemed them led them to freedom, to the land that you promised. And you've rescued us from the kingdom and the power of darkness and brought us into the light of your Son. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for Resurrection Day, for Sunday. Help us this morning to worship you as we ought to give you the praise and the glory and the honour that we owe you. Father, I pray that you bring from us, Lord, Lord, words, prayers, worship, Father, that bring joy to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we have, I'll sing unto the Lord. I live, I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of Him shall be sweet. I will be glad. I will be glad in. Bless now the Lord, all oh my soul, praise ye the Lord. Bless now the Lord, oh my soul, praise ye the Lord. Bless now the Lord, oh my soul, praise ye the Lord. Bless now the Lord. I live, I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of Him shall be sweet. I will be glad, I will be glad in the Lord. 
Bless now the Lord, oh my soul, praise ye the Lord. Bless now the Lord, oh my soul, praise ye the Lord. Bless now the Lord, oh my soul, praise ye the Lord. Now the Lord, oh my soul, praise ye the Lord. <clears throat> Read some words from Psalm 104. Starting from the beginning. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself with light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes clouds his chariots, rides on the wings of the wind. Makes the winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. Verse 24. How many are your works, Lord? Wisdom, you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things, both large and small. The ships go to and fro. Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. All creatures look to you. You give them their food at the proper time. You give it to them, they gather it up. You open your hand, they're satisfied with good things. You hide your face, they're terrified. You take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. You send your spirit, they're created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, touches the mountains and the smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Splendor of the King.
Great are you, Lord. Oh, Father, we worship you. We worship you this morning, Father. We give you our hearts. A couple of scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. Hear, O Israel. Lord our God is one Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your hearts. If we were Jewish, we would recite that twice a day. The Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. And you'll love the Lord your God, all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. Brilliant. John 14, 15 to 18. It's Jesus speaking the night before he was betrayed. If you love me, Keep my commands. I will ask the Father and he'll give you another advocate to help you. To be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So there's two kind of key pieces of scripture there. The ancient Israelites had a word from God. They had the law, the law of Moses. Uh, that was, they were to keep it close to them. And it was to keep them close to him. And twice a day, devout Jews still recite those words here over Israel. It's a kind of defining thing, really. They were to love the Lord, their God, with everything that they had, with their whole being. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Every waking thought in their conversations, at work, at home, walking along the road, bind these words on your forehead, so put them on the doorposts of your house. And some of them literally did this, and still do. You see Orthodox Jews sometimes going around and got a flattery on the head. It's all external. All of this is something that you do. It's a word that they have. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. But it hasn't fundamentally changed them. It doesn't stop them sinning. It just make sure that they know that they have sinned when they sinned. Jesus gives us a better word. There's an interesting comparison between these two scriptures. Because you've got a command. If you love me, keep my commands. 
and the other scripture talks about these, these commands. But the command is to love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Hear and love. And Jesus gives a better word. If you love me, keep my commands. What are his commands? Love God. Same thing. Love the Lord your God. He said the first and greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second, love your neighbour as yourself. He tells us to love our enemies. He tells us to love ourselves by implication. What else does he command us to do? Love your neighbour. There are very few things, actually, that Jesus actually gives us his commands, but there are a few. Just to go into all the world and make disciples and preach the gospel. And he tells us to remember him until he comes. Breaking the bread. That's about it. But he points us back to the law of Moses. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. But Jesus gives the ultimate promise. This is the thing. This is the thing that's different. We're looking towards Pentecost in a couple of weeks. He, gi he gives us the ultimate promise. This, this, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Who transforms us from the inside out. He writes this law on our hearts. There's so many scriptures in the Old Testament that talks about replacing our heart stone and giving us a heart of flesh. We're about writing his law on our hearts so that it's inside, so that it's inside, so that it's inside. And Jesus says, you know him. <laughs> You're talking to him now. <laughs> but he's with you, but he's going to be in you. And then he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. How brilliant is that? How brilliant is that? The Spirit of God lives in us, writes his law on our hearts, writes his words on our hearts, reminds us of everything. Brilliant. More love, more power.
we're going to uh, have a time of prayer and um, if you've got something you'd like to share, there's an opportunity to do it. Um, if you want it to go on the recording, then you need to come to the front. Uh, otherwise, we'll assume that you don't want it to go on the recording and we'll cut it out. And that's fine. Um, a couple of prayer requests. Um, we're going to do um, pray for India. Uh, I've, I've got a slide um, about that. Um, and I think we need to pray also for... Uh, pray for Pakistan. We have a prayer request for, for Pakistan. That's an ongoing thing. Uh, same situation, really. They're not quite as bad as the situation in India, but it's, um, it's the same kind of thing going on there. Um, many... The economy is collapsing in some of these places and people can't work. Um, because they can't work, they can't feed themselves. Um, and even if they have the money, the shops aren't functioning anyway. So it, it's a bit of a crisis, really. Um, especially in the... I think if you're living in the middle of a city, it's not so bad. But if you're in the more rural community, it's, it's very hard. Um, and I think we need to pray for our own country, too, because we've got some big stuff coming up. Um, as we come out of lockdown um, and this whole kind of situation with the virus um, we just need to pray that people will be wise and that the government will also um, and they've taken a lot of executive power I think um, and some of it's not very constitutional and um, I think fair enough in the circumstances they probably need, needed to do that but uh, it needs to be handled with some, some wisdom I think and the whole kind of Scottish thing coming up too which is another issue um, we need to be praying for our nation um, so yeah let's pray Father Lord, we've been singing your praise. We've been talking about your, the amazing things you've done. You are astounding. You amaze us. You pour your life into us, Lord. We don't deserve it, Father. You chose us. You redeemed us from darkness and brought us into your light, Father. Love is greater than anything we could imagine. Father, it's uncontainable incomprehensible Lord we give our lives to you in love not in fear turn to you Father in deliberate devotion Lord teach us to love you more to love you with all that we have, Lord, with all our hearts and our soul and our mind and our strength. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is uh, from Open Doors. Father, we pray for the sick and the suffering at the moment. Father, in, that, in the middle of that crisis that they have in that great country, pray, Father, that you would bring healing, that you would comfort those who mourn, those who are grieving. Father, I pray that you would sustain the, the hospital system in India, Lord. And, Lord, the, the supply of oxygen and uh, other equipment, Father, medicine, ventilators, Lord, I pray that you would make that happen, Father. Sort the logistics, Lord. I pray for the government in India. 
Father, Lord, we might sometimes question, Lord, whether what they're doing is right or whether it's wise. But I pray, Father, that in this situation you would give the, uh, the president and, 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 and that those who have power and responsibility, that you give them wisdom, Lord. Father, their health system is strained and their hospitals are over capacity. Father, and there are lots of people, Father, there who are suffering without proper treatment, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you would intervene, Lord. You are our healer and you are our provider, Father. And, and I pray, Lord, that Lord, this would be an opportunity, Father, for, for people who are desperate to seek your face, Lord. Lord, you, you, you hear us when we call. And Lord, we, we call to you on, on, on their behalf, Father, now. Father, we've, we've been through an emergency situation here, Father. It wasn't as bad as that, but it was bad, Father. And we've seen you move. We pray for open doors, Father, and charity to, Father, our brothers and sisters in that organisation. I pray for them and their partners in India, Father, as they, as they seek to serve you there, distributing food, aid, and, and Lord, encouragement to the brothers and sisters in that land, Father, who have been persecuted, are being persecuted, Father, because of your name. But I pray, Father, that in that dark place, Father, you would shine brightly. pray for our brothers and sisters in, in Pakistan too, Father. And I pray for the government there too, Father, that you'd also give them wisdom, Lord, to, to rule fairly and justly, Lord. We see, we see more stories of people being accused and, and, of, of blasphemy and, and, and people being imprisoned and, and, and people being arbitrarily murdered, Father. And, and I pray, Lord, that you would bring your peace into that place, Lord, that your word... Father, would be deliverance and salvation, Lord. The gospel, the good news of Christ, the message of peace, the message of reconciliation, Lord. Pray for our brothers and sisters, Lord, in, in Toba, Father, that you would give them your presence, Lord, sense of, of your presence with them, Lord, your help. Please sustain them, Father. Provide for their needs, Lord. Give them strength and health. And more than that, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would bring them into a closer walk with you, a knowledge of God, a knowledge of, 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 your, of your truth, of your word, Lord. That they would see what's going on in the land around them, Father. Give them discernment and spiritual authority, Father, in that place. In Jesus' name. Ephesians 3, 14 to 19. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power with all of God's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how deep is the love of Christ to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure with the fullness of God. Let us be filled to the measure with the fullness of God. If you're watching this on video, take the opportunity to pray for those who are close to you. Bring your, your thoughts and your prayers 
to our Father. Amen. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Brother Colin. <clears throat> well, good morning. Good to be here. I thank the Lord for this opportunity to speak his word. And he's given me a word and... Uh, I have read this passage many times and uh, not seen it, yet I've seen other things in the passage. I want to take you to Mark, Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, and verse 35 to 41. And its title is, Jesus Calms the Storm. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. I like that, goodness me. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Let's just bow in prayer, shall we? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord and our Redeemer. You know our hearts, Lord. You know just the word that we need, each one of us, and we pray by your Holy Spirit you will speak to us and encourage us and strengthen us in the faith. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Recently I've been challenged by the subject of fear, fear, and a title for this message could be Faith Over Fear. We all face, or this fear is a, can be a very real problem, fear in life. I think I'm right in saying that we all face it from time to time, fear, fear of something. And um, it became a fearful time for the disciples. Just a simple thing, going across the, the sea, the, the lake um, in, uh, there in Israel. And the squall came up and they were, got this fear of drowning. Don't you care, teacher? Don't you care? We're just about to drown. <laughs> Don't you care? And... Um, that can be a real fear. I was once swimming in a pool of some friends at the deep end and I had a grandson came to me at the deep end. He swam like a fish, of course he did, I didn't. And he started playing around and pushing me like this and doing, waving his arms and doing all sorts of things. And it, I suddenly felt I was going under and I really did feel afraid, afraid of drowning or something, you know. <laughs> I began to choke and I said, get off. I had to shout at him. He didn't realise what he was doing, of course. He thought it was just fun. Well, it wasn't fun to me. I had that fear of drowning. And we can have these fears in life. 
hopefully not too often drowning, but uh, we can have fear of health, a fear of circumstances, we've had that, a fear of stress, a fear when we can't pay our bills, a fear of family problems, very few of us are sure to those, fear of the economy, Fear of the unknown in the future, that can be a real fear. Fear of failure, fear of falling. And no doubt you could fill the list down, no doubt I've missed a good many out. But my first point is this, number one, I have three, number one is the disciples' fear of drowning. They had this fear of drowning. And they said to each other, don't you care? And um, in life, as I've just mentioned, there's a lot of fears. And today, if you didn't know it, it's called Rogation Sunday. Bit of information for us. Rogation Sunday. You say, what on earth is Rogation Sunday? Well, it's 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 a... uh, a part of the church, I, I believe the Church of England, it could be in their calendar of rogation. And uh, in rogation, it was a time set aside for prayer and fasting. A time of, of praying for people, for, for the crops and for, the, for food. And that's what rogation was, but... There is also what they call a major rogation, which is held on the 25th of April. And there's a minor rogation, which are the next few days before Ascension Day on Thursday. Now, don't think that I knew this. I had to look it up. The word rogation comes from the Latin verb rogare, meaning to ask, which speaks of the beseeching of of the, of, to God of the appeasement of his anger and for their protection from calamities faithfully observed this day in the past has been very important in the rural areas and has been what they did is they had what they called beating, I guess more complicated beating of the browns and they went round following the minister, the priest, round the the boundary of the parish and it's beating of the bounds. I don't know whether they beat it, how they could beat it, but anyway, that's what what is in the uh, information. Beating of the bounds. And it was the fear of um, God, for God's protection for the disease, against the disease and disaster of the crops of the farming community. Fear. That's what rogation is. Rogation Sunday. The fear of disease and failure of the crops. A real fear. The disciples had that fear of drowning. A real fear. And we can often find ourselves in the grip of fear in our circumstances. The disciples woke Jesus saying, Teacher, don't you care? And we find ourselves saying or thinking that God doesn't really care when we have difficult circumstances. Does God really care? And we so easily ask the question. And the second point I have is this. The fear that God does not understand. The fear that God does not understand. And I want to point out to you that God does know, does understand, and he he knows our fears. Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you not, do you, do you still have no faith? And the question comes to us, why are you so afraid? Why do you have a fear? Why is it? And what is the answer? What is the answer to fear? 
write down <clears throat> the whole Bible, there are 365 at least quotations saying, don't be afraid. God speaking to his people, write down, if you want the list, I've got it in the Bible, in the back of my book. Uh, very interesting. Don't fear. Don't let this situation... God said to be many times, right through the whole scripture, don't fear. Don't be afraid. And uh, it comes again to us. <clears throat> we go right from Genesis and so on, that uh, Genesis, in God, Genesis God says, do not be afraid to Abraham. The answer to fear is faith. Faith that overcomes fear. Jesus, in this account of calming of the storm, Jesus asks, where is your faith? If faith enables us to overcome fear, where do we get it? Where do we get more faith? How do we get it? Is it bought or earned? No. You can't buy it, you can't earn it. In Proverbs it says, the fear of God is the beginning of, under, of, of beginning of wisdom. God's word gives us the answer to faith over fear. In Romans 10 and verse 17 we read, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Consequently, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. Faith is built up on the words of Christ, what he says to us, his word. And we read in John's Gospel, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus was the word. Jesus was that word. And he came and dwelt among us on earth. He came and lived a life here. And in <clears throat> verse 41, I've never seen this before, but in verse 41, although well, I've read it many times, the disciples were terrified. Why were they terrified? They were terrified of Jesus. Seems strange, isn't it? They come from the fear of drowning. They might not live, they drown. To the fear of Jesus in the boat. What a strange seesaw of events. They had seen miracles, these disciples. And they had seen that. But they'd never seen this before. I think there's twice where Jesus calmed the, the storm. And they thought, goodness me, who is this man that can control the wind, the waves and the sea? This is what Jesus did. But faith overcomes fear. Jesus says to them, why are you so afraid? Do you still, not, do you still have no faith? He didn't say they have no faith. He says, do you still have no faith? The disciples were on a steep learning curve, weren't they? And we are sometimes too. Jesus was in the boat. And they could trust him. The terrified disciples were coming from the fear of drowning to the fear of Jesus. This has huge implications, the fear of Jesus. They were fearing for the, because this person in the boat was able to control the weather. We wish we were good sometimes, don't we? But Jesus can control the weather. And when you think about it, here was the Son of God in the boat with them. 
I, think, I noticed running through the, the um, first part of the service that Steve took that there was a, a thread, to me anyway, of how great God is, how great Jesus is, how wonderful he is. And he is in the boat with the disciples. This is the God who was going to die for them. This was God in the boat. And they, they suddenly realised they were terrified. But Jesus didn't want us to be terrified. And he said, where's your faith? He wanted them to trust him implicitly. Can I reverently ask the question... Is Jesus in your boat? That perhaps doesn't sound very reverent, does it? But is Jesus in your boat? Or otherwise, is Jesus in your life? We read, of course, in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Believe in him. God plants his Holy Spirit in our lives. Jesus is in the boat. Jesus is in your life. This is a holy God. This is a God that power, so powerful that can control the wind and the waves. He is in the boat with them. And they hadn't realised it. They suddenly were terrified. And it can be terrifying, the thought of, of God and all his power. Why should he be in my boat? But he is. He's in my life. When God comes into our lives, he plants his Holy Spirit within us. We read in Romans chapter 8, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of the sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is, alive in you, is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Can you take that in? His spirit in you. And he gives you eternal life. That is fantastic. That is God's way. That is God's purpose. And the question comes, of course, is God in your life? Is his spirit in your life? And if he, if he is not, Jesus asks the question, do you still have no faith? Put your faith in him, whatever the circumstances. You know, experience can be a very hard taskmaster sometimes. But we in the family, Margaret and I, have experienced the presence and the encouragement and the, and the presence of, the, of God over the years and it's amazing it's, it's almost terrifying and yet it isn't because we trust him we trust him as saviour the question of course comes as I've just said the question comes do you still have no faith do you trust in Jesus for your salvation if you trust in Jesus for your salvation do you trust him for that circumstance there, that problem there, that health? Do you trust him? Do you trust him for your salvation? You can trust him for everything. Is he in your boat? The storm may come, <clears throat> but he can calm that. Remember, Jesus is in the boat. Jesus is in, in your life. And we thank him for it. I have this letter from the what's known as the Farm Farming Community Network, which occasionally we have supported as a church. And they asked for prayer for the volunteers. The Farm Communities Network is a team of volunteers. I think there's about 400 volunteers. At one time I was one of those volunteers. And they will 
help farmers that are in desperate need of fear of their circumstances, fear of finance, families, all sorts of things. And approximately each year, 6,000 farmers will ring this farm community network for help. And the, the, they ask, the, the letter asks for prayer for the farming community and for the workers, the FCN volunteers, trustees and staff. They ask for prayer for, the, for that organisation, that charity. That does a, a, a wonderful work, although I say it myself and I was part of it, it does a wonderful work in, in helping families and farmers in their time of desperate need and fear. I may have told you before, but the one that I was able to help that stands out in my mind was the man, that, the farmer that had exactly the same disease that I have and he was fed up because his daughter was getting married and he felt that his daughter was wrong. She shouldn't, have married, shouldn't be marrying this chap. And in protest he said, I've just had enough of life. I've hung the rope up in the yard and I'm going to hang myself, Colin, tonight. What do you do with a phone call like that? The fear, the dread that this farmer had. And uh, I was taught by training never to hang up on the person, whatever the circumstances, you never hang up. You keep the conversation going as best you can, even if it's silence, you do not hang up on them. And I kept going with this farmer for about half an hour, and that seemed an awful long time. And then he said to me, he says, Colin, I'm going to bed. I thought, praise the Lord, he's going to bed. The crisis was over. The next day was a Saturday. He attended his daughter's wedding. He was there at the wedding. And he rang me up to tell me that he was at the wedding. God was in that situation. And we just praise him and thank him for it. That was an extreme case. But that's the case of what the... Farm Community Network does all the time throughout the year. And it, <clears throat> in this letter it says, Choose to mark Rogation Sunday on the 9th of May as a day of prayer for the farming community and choose FCN as your chosen charity for that day. <clears throat> well, we leave that to the powers that be, but we pray for those. Just in closing, let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are in our boat, as it were, Lord. You're not being irreverent. You're in our lives. We thank you for this example of the disciples in the, of old and how they were <clears throat> terrified, and yet you were there with them. They no need to be. And they realized you are in the boat. And you are in our lives and we just <clears throat> thank you and praise you that you will see us through. Help us in our faith and trust of you. We trust you faithfully, Lord. Help us to trust you even more. We pray for the farming community and for those that volunteer to help and to walk with those in desperate need. We pray for them this morning, Lord, that you'll bless them and keep them and encourage them in, in their walk with others in their need. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen. We're going to sing as our closing. What is it, Steve? No longer a slave. No longer a slave to, to fear. Now, word, can we sing this? No longer a slave to fear. I trust we can. I've sung it many a time and then I'm thinking, oh yes, you failed there, you did start fearing. Let's sing it anyway. Thank you.
Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his great power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations now and forever. Amen. Father, as we go from here, Lord, will we take this word on board, Father? Lord, if we're going to fear anything, <laughs> Lord, let's have a healthy respect for you. The creator of heaven and earth. The beginning and ending. Author of life. We worship you. We love you. Father, as we go from here, I pray that we walk in the, in the power of your spirit to live and work to your glory and honour. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.